Hello, everyone. We have made it to Mexico City. We flew in last night. It was a little bit of a bumpy flight, but we made it. And this is where we're staying for our trip. This is the Four Seasons. We decided to switch it up a little bit. And so far, it's just been absolutely incredible. It's such, such a beautiful hotel. So I thought I'd give you a little look before we get on our way in case you were curious. This is one of the best parts, in my opinion. The view and this beautiful courtyard. In fact, there's a better view of the courtyard. Down there is a restaurant as well as a really famous cocktail bar, which we will be going to later in this video. But we're going to head over to one of our, honestly, one of the most peaceful spots in the world, Barca Mexico, to have a nice little walk, walk off some of the jet lag before we have breakfast at one of our favorite breakfast spots, Maque. Our first art exhibit of the day is going to be at OMR Gallery, which is always a wow moment thanks to the layout of the gallery. It's pretty much just this giant room and then upstairs, so artists really get to go all out, and this exhibit is no exception. This is a show by Eduardo Sarabia titled Four Minutes of Darkness, which is referencing a solar eclipse, which is one of many inspirations for this show. And this is the second of three exhibits that he's dedicated to a specific solar eclipse that's happening on April 8th of 2024. And it will be visible in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, where his family is from. And that's where the final exhibit will take place at the Museo de Arte de Mazatlan. The main focal point of the show is this temple that Sarabi has built in the center of the room, and it's meant to serve as a catalyst for transformation. It's meant to fully immerse us as the viewer and invite us to leave the constraints of reality and enter his imagined world. So the matte black figures that we saw in the center appear to almost be anointed by the solar eclipse, giving them this stark, dramatic look. Sarabia's family and childhood are an ever-present theme as well throughout the show, revealing itself in the most obvious way in this mural on the wall. So even the vines themselves are significant because they're referencing the Los Angeles neighborhood where Sarabia grew up, where neighbors would paint scenes of vines and flowers and branches on the facades of their homes to prevent anyone from tagging them with graffiti. And these vines highlight significant objects as well that represent various memories from Sarabia's childhood, like baseball and coins and vases. We're now going to head over to Maya Contemporary, which is a gallery that's tucked away in the back of this restaurant's courtyard. And this is a show by the Mexican artist Marcos Castro. 
and his paintings have a nod of modern day romanticism thanks to the way they capture nature and the sublime. This is particularly true in this room, which features a site-specific mural featuring another key element present throughout the show, and that is fire. So fire is featured particularly inside of homes as a symbol for regeneration. The artist states that, quote, our homes are our shelter, the limit between me and the world. In this way, burning the house down is not just an act of renewal and transformation, but also the moment of tearing down the border between I and nature, inner and outer. I really enjoyed, and I want to call out the tribute that he's made to the Romantic movement's influence on his work by the reference that he's made here to the famous 1818 work Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog by the German Romanticist artist Caspar David Friedrich. Some of my personal favorites of the show were the ones that he wrapped in this ribbed plastic because I think it gives the works a surrealist quality. Our next stop is Gallery Nordenhaka. This is an exhibit of paintings and sculptures by Naufes Ramirez Figueroa that were inspired by a trip to an archaeological site in Cacachla, Mexico. At this site, rare murals were found depicting the, quote, artistic exchange between the Maya and Central Mexican cultures. Ramirez Figueroa was inspired by this depiction of cultural mobility and cross-pollination and decided to reinterpret them in a modern way, representing modern cultural exchange. 
He did this by focusing on one specific mural, a battle mural, which depicts a sacrifice in honor of the corn god. And he replaced the shields of the warriors with backpacks in order to represent modern cultural exchange in the form of the diasporas of the global south. These sculptures are made of bronze, and they represent branches from trees important to the Mayan culture. Upstairs is a group show featuring works by two artists. Min Jun Kim's works are all about repetition and explore through, quote, forms, processes, and colors, the way in which the mind connects with the hand and the brush, and how breathing become one with the rhythm of drawing and the body. These other works are by Anne Edholm, who is a Swedish artist known for creating these large geometric paintings. We're now at Travesio Quattro, which is going to be our final stop before we take a little break for the day. This is an exhibit that highlights the different phases of Eleanor Koch's artistic career from the 60s all the way to the mid 90s. Coke, or Lore, she was referred to, is known for her paintings of interiors, still lifes, and landscapes. And as you may have been able to guess by the color palette, she was born in 1926 and died in 2018. I think the gallery was really smart to do this pop of blue carpet because I think it really brings the paintings to life. Although Lore was born in Berlin, she spent most of her life in Brazil, and she was influenced by various artistic movements and figures, including the Brazilian Concretus vanguard. So this was an art movement that emerged in Brazil during the mid-20th century, and it's also known as Concretism, which is characterized by its emphasis on geometric abstraction, rationalism, and the rejection of representational forms in favor of pure form and color. However, as you can see, Lore doesn't purely subscribe to this. Her works combine elements of figuration, landscape, and a little bit of abstraction.
We're now going to head back to the hotel, have a little rest, and then get a snack. It is Valentine's Day, and we found there was a very sweet little surprise for the occasion. They even brought in a vase for my flowers, which was so thoughtful. I've quickly changed because it's gotten a little cold. My tip for Mexico City is to always layer because the temperature can fluctuate up to 30 degrees Fahrenheit in a given day. The desert climate is real. So we're now at Panaderia Rosetta because it's my favorite bakery. The line always looks long and scary like this, but it moves super quickly and it's always worth it, I promise. The Berliners are my favorite. I'm not exaggerating when I say I probably eat one of these every single day when I'm here, but they're just very different to anything you get in the US. They're not super sweet. They're just rich and delicious. My favorite flavor is the chocolate and vanilla. This was just a plain vanilla because they were out sadly today, but it was still amazing. To balance out the sweet, we also got a quesadilla, which was supreme. Before we head to our next set of galleries, we had to stop into Casa Boscas because I wanted to pick up some chocolate as gifts. And as the name of the store would suggest, they have the most incredible selection of books and magazines that I always have to check out when I'm here. Now that we're refueled, we're heading over to Galleria Karen Huber to see an exhibit of paintings by the LA-based artist Andrew Holmquist. This exhibit, which is titled Looking in All the Wrong Places, showcases Holmquist's reflection on his time living in Berlin through a series of paintings. So they're set around 2017, depicting a variety of urban settings, such as public parks, city streets, urinals, clubs, bars, and salons. And like many of the great Impressionists, such as Lautrec, Manet, and Seurat, Holmquist uses color and line work to capture the actual feeling of cosmopolitan life. He captures not only the energy of city life, but the isolation that can come with it as well. Like the title suggests, there's a void present between expectation and anticipation versus reality. So Holmquist came to Berlin thinking he'd find love, and instead he found loneliness. And I think he captures this irony really well that's present in most cities. There's an energy present thanks to being surrounded by people living their lives out in the open consistently. But there's also an isolation that comes from not really emotionally connecting to any of these people.
notes, we were really lucky to have Karen Huber here herself walking us through the show and each work in really beautiful detail. So thank you for that, Karen. I love how the show ends with this painting which depicts Holmquist's now fiancé in a Berlin apartment, and it's where love, quote, finally becomes concrete, a real face where only phantoms were before. I think there's something so beautiful about how it ends in this private setting inside of his apartment where love was found. It really just speaks to the power of intimacy and how it really just takes that one person to fill the void sometimes. We're now at Marion Ibrahim Gallery. This is a predominantly Chicago-based gallery who now has locations in Paris. And they opened this one in Mexico City last year. And the space is so incredible, but also very unique, which you'll see why in a second. This is an exhibit by the Ghanaian painter Amoko Buofo, and this is his first show in Mexico City, and it features his signature portraits of individuals that are close to him, created with a unique finger painting gesture. As I touched on a little before, I just love how the space is organized. There are these small individual rooms that you can kind of wander in and out of, especially for this show, because it feels like each room houses the personalities of the people captured in these portraits. The exhibit is titled The One That Got Away. And in each of the works, Buofo explores his relationships with these individuals, as well as their broader cultural context. This is such an incredible room. I love how the paintings had to be created specifically for this space, just because they fit so perfectly into each of the areas of molding. I also love how each of these individuals look exalted, like they're royalty. Because of the position where they're hanging, we are looking up at them as in awe.
In this room, which is the final room of the show, Buofo experiments with mosaics and stained glass for the first time, which I think, similar to the last room, really exalts the subjects into this almost godly state. Our final stop of the day is to the Museo Experimental El Eco, which is a contemporary art gallery that was designed in 1952 by the sculptor Matias Goritz, a Mexican artist who worked closely with Luis Berrigan. We're here to see works by another Karen Huber artist, Alan Villavicencio. This show was inspired by an installation created by Herman Guetto for the lobby of the gallery back in 1953, where he arranged the paintings in a way where they weren't confined to the walls, but instead they were detached so the visitors could see them when descending the stairs. He did this in order to activate a different way of understanding the works through their relationship with the architecture of the place. So similarly, Alan Villavicencio created these site-specific pieces to respond to the unique architecture of the building in order to encourage a new way of understanding the artwork, prompting us as viewers to see it in different ways. I've done another quick outfit change. Again, it is Valentine's Day, so I'm attempting to look a little less monastery chic. We're going to go downstairs for a quick drink at 50 Mills, which is a bar famous for their cocktails. And then we're going to go to Enrique Olvera's restaurant slash bar to Cucci. So I got the green bees drink, which is mezcal infused in avocado leaf, avocado bitters, lime juice, and honey with sweet and sour caramel. Also, please look at the bee in the ice cube. How cool is that? And this is Dakuchi. It's actually more of a bar than a restaurant, I would say, but the food is still incredible, which is exactly what you would expect from the product of Enrique Olvera. This is what the restaurant looks like. It's very, very sexy. The drinks are also incredible. They had a mezcal strawberry martini for Valentine's Day, alongside with a special mole that was pink, which you saw earlier. And honestly, the dessert was probably my favorite thing of all. It is a habanero sorbet on a lemon crushed ice. So incredible. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into Mexico City. And we are not finished yet. There are more galleries to see in the neighborhoods of Condesa and Polanco. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss that video. And I will see you all later.